Andre. There's an epic link thread on the gear page forum dedicated to live looping with an emphasis on functions and concepts that tend to be conspicuously absent from the post loop station world of song oriented phrase samplers. The thread was started many years back by David Torn and in a recent post, David expressed a desire to see looping devices implementing ways to mess with the timing of rhythmically oriented loops in various ways. Iconic hip-hop producer Jay Dilla was mentioned as a key reference in that post, and when Dilla's work is discussed, terms like loose, laid-back, woozy, drunken, and unquantized tend to get used a lot. That post was made around the same time that I was beta testing the Enso 1.2 software update, and one of the main features of that update is its MIDI slicing function. In the previous video, we looked at Enso's MIDI slicing in great detail using examples that chopped up live loops in a variety of very rhythmically precise ways. But the combination of the new MIDI slice feature, along with David's post, got me thinking about ways of using that functionality to introduce degrees of randomness, looseness, and variability to the time feel of live loops. So this is a document of some of my findings thus far. Now this video does pick up right where the previous one left off, so if you're not familiar with Enso's MIDI slicing capabilities, you may want to check that one out as well. As always, thank you very much for tuning in. All right, here's a new loop I built up off camera. And let's bring the beat in for reference. And now let's just do some stuff. to normal. All right, so what's going on in these weird wobbly clips is that we have no data, much like we did before. We also have these short little things up on MIDI note C4. And as you can see up here on the MIDI control panel, C4 is assigned to the reverse function. And if we look over here, you can see it moving backwards and then back to forwards, play back very quickly. These are momentary commands. Um, so it goes into reverse for as long as the note lasts, then it goes back to forwards, play back when the note is released. And these are very short notes, as you can see. So the idea is by having these very short bursts of reverse happening, you can knock the loop slightly out of alignment. And then when new slices are triggered on the downbeat, it'll go back to being properly aligned. So these clips are basically dancing between having it properly aligned and knocking it out of alignment. If we look here, we have lots of very short instances of reverse in a row. There's a little bit of moving the individual MIDI notes early or late. Not a whole lot, um, for reasons we'll look at shortly. Here's an example. So you can see there on MIDI note three, or C3, that's deliberately happening a little ahead of the beat. These are all pretty locked to the beat as far as the note instances. This is only two note instances. And everything else is just playing around with reverse. This is all reverse aside from the first slice.
Yeah, so some of this you can see there, that's moving the note a little ahead, so it's not quantized right to the beat. Similar thing going on there, and there as well with B2. E2 is a little ahead of the beat there. Yeah, so both of these, C sharp 2 and D sharp 2 and A2, are all a little ahead of the beat. So for reference, there are some clips that I did which are not doing anything with reverse bursts and strictly moving things around. So you can see here that some of the notes are a little ahead of the beat. So there's no reverse going on in the clips in this third channel. This doesn't sound bad, but it is a little more of like an overtly glitchy kind of sound, I would say. Um, the clips that use reverse... I would say, to my ears, it's a smoother kind of sound. It's not as immediately obvious that you're doing weird glitchy retriggery stuff. Whereas if we go back to the strict moving notes around, again, it doesn't really sound bad, but it has more of a uh, kind of glitchy, hard edge cut and paste kind of thing. Whereas to me, the stuff in this column is a lot more smooth and organic and flowing sounding. You can do more than one clip at a time. Let's do that. So now we're sending one smooth reverse clip and one hard edge no reverse clip and they're basically fighting it out. here don't have any reverse going on in them. This is just moving notes a little ahead of or behind the beat. Similar kind of thing as what we were doing. And then this is with a follow action. Again, no reverse going on here. second. Let's return to zero. There we go. Let's do some follow action stuff. Let's turn this group so every two beats is switching to a different clip and these clips do have the short reverse commands embedded into them. Part of what makes this so cool is that you can overdub and do feedback swells and other live looping stuff on it 
while it's playing back. straight with the drum machine. Let's bring feedback to zero and I'll do some of that. Just one clip. My favorite ministry song. Oh. Thank you. 